Hey, Denny, I'm just curious how you felt this game went. Obviously, you know, you said last time, you know, you're not going to be perfect every time, but where did you think you did well? Where did you think you could improve? Listen, first of all, I'm not um, looking at myself, you know. At the end of the day, I'm a part of a team. And I need, I needed to do better, and, and we all needed to do better than that. And, um, you know, shots weren't falling for me tonight. Um, no big deal. Um, I'm going to keep shooting my shots and keep making that uh, good decision making, keep, keep keep making that extra pass for my teammates. And uh, I mean, in general, it was it was kind of off today, but um, we're going to get back to work. I'm going to get back to work um, and hopefully we're going to we gonna have a better game next game. So, okay. Thanks, Fred. Fred? Oh, yeah. Hey, Danny. How you doing? Um, I'm, I'm just wondering, I know after that first game, I asked you like about your, your reads and stuff on particular kinds of passes. And, and I'm curious now that you've got one, one NBA, you entered this one, having already played one NBA game, were there any moments where you felt like, Oh, I, I did that last game. I've got my placing in, whether it's way a defense reacts to you or where your teammates were or anything else. Uh, can you just shorten the, the question? Like, yeah, you know, yes. Really quick. yes, that was a long question. So yeah. a reasonable request. Uh, were there any moments tonight where things came a little bit easier for you because you had already had that game under your belt? Um, I, I don't know what to tell you. I mean, I'm, I'm still – I mean, it's still the second game. Whether or not I had a good game in the first game, I, I told it in the last interview that I'm not going to be perfect, and, and it's all new to me. It's all new to me, the whole environment, playing the, in that floor. It, it's all new to me. It will take me some time to adjust. I'm not going to be honest with you. And um, I'm also human, and I make mistakes, and I'm going to keep working hard. Uh, I think we, we have, as a team, a great future. Uh, this is the time for us to prepare and be ready and practice. So whether or not we were good or bad today, if I was good or bad today, um, I just made the right reads. I took my shots that I took last time, and if it didn't fall, it didn't fall, you know? So um, it's not, it doesn't mean that I'm going to sag off right now. But um, yeah, it's just how it went today. Eva? Eva, you're on mute. Sorry. Yeah. Um, Denny, you mentioned that things felt a little bit off tonight. Can you be more specific in, in what felt off for you? I don't know who you, if you look in the statistic, you, you, will, you will know what to tell me. But uh, I think mostly my, my three point shots, I settled too much about the threes. Uh, I wasn't as aggressive as I was with, uh, last game. And uh, yeah, I'll need, I'll need to figure out my, my way to, to also when I have bad shooting days. Um, to do some other stuff, but I think uh, I made the right I made the right reads for my teammates, um, and it just the game didn't go well, um, also for me and then and for everybody. But I try to do my best every time. Karita, yes, Denny, you mentioned how everything is still new for you. What would you say has been the biggest adjustment so far for you in these two games that you played? Um, definitely the pace, still getting used to it. Um, sometimes the physicality is, uh, is, is, is different, but, but in general, I'm, I'm playing with a new team. Guys, you, you need to understand, I came from overseas, um, straight to a new team, new environment, new, new country, a new culture. So I, I think grew up here in, in, in the States. So for me, it's kind of different than other guys. But I'm not comparing me to anybody. I'm just going to keep playing hard, keep putting the, the hard work that I'm always getting. Um, and and I, I hope uh, things will go well for me. But um, I, will, I will need to be a little bit patient. I need to be a little bit patient. And it's all going to come, come together in the end. Fred? Hey, Danny, one more for you. Um, what's your comfort level been like defensively during these first two games? Comfort. I mean, I'm not second off of anybody. I'm getting my rebounds. Um, trying to contest as many as I can. I mean, back back in back in Europe, I used to um, I used to raise my hands when I'm defending. Um, 
which um, in the NBA does not always work. So I'll need to contest a little bit more. But in general, I think I can slide my feet. I mean, I can stay in front of guys. I don't have any problem. I'm not afraid of anybody um, in this league. And, and I'm just going to come there and compete. Feel oh, good. First place in the Lord Series, Jesus Christ. Uh, but it did feel good. It felt just good to be back on the boards, to be able to uh, just be out there, be in our arena, be with my team. Uh, that all felt great. It definitely felt weird not having any fans, the protocols we had to go through because I didn't go through the bubble. So it was an adjustment for me for sure. Uh, but you know what? I mean, this is this is how the rest of the year is going to go. So uh, I think I'll be I'll get used to it pretty cool. Matthew? Yeah, just to follow up on that, like what was the most jarring part for you without the fans here? And like, were you asking guys? Because you definitely uh, better than they have. Probably the fake crowd noise. That was throwing me off a little bit. I remember I missed the, missed the hell out of a three at the top of the key, and it was like cheering. I'm like, why are we cheering? I didn't make it. So uh, it was just funny just being in that environment. But uh, it's going to take some getting used to. It's kind of like it is a, a sense of when you're in a game, you're locked into the game, you don't really pay attention to the outside noise. But when you're on the bench and, you know, you're just sitting there, and it's, it definitely it has a different vibe to it. Uh, but, you know, this is our safest way of playing, and that's the most important thing for sure. So whatever it takes, whatever it means, that, you know, how we got to go out there and play, we got to do it. Ava? Brad, now that you've gotten the chance to kind of go out there, what do you think – where do you think this offense is just with such a short training camp and, and integrating all the new players and everything? Oh, that's going to be the – that's going to be the toughest part. I mean, but we're not the only team that's dealing with that. You know, so everybody's – Everybody has a short camp. You know, everybody's trying to implement new guys, you know, that they acquired. And I'm trying to do that to the best of their abilities. And, you know, we're trying to do the same. Uh, you know, hopefully we can get get more guys out next game. I mean, we have one more here on Saturday against Detroit again. So, you know, I think hopefully Russ gets out and play um, and DB as well. But, you know, more or less, you know, we're looking forward to just continue to do what we've been doing over the past year. You know, we know our offense, we know our sets. It's, you know, it was the first time they played with me in the long time. So, you know, it was an adjustment for everybody, uh, you know, once the bright lights came on, but I think we'll be okay. And it didn't look like you had any rest or anything, but it did, did it feel like it was easy for you to get back in a rhythm right away? I know you said you wanted to get some time for that. Yes and no. Uh, it was it just, it was just felt different. Like I haven't played since March, so I haven't. I haven't seen live basketball besides my teammates, you know, in a long time. So it was definitely new and an adjustment for me. Uh, but, you know, I'm ready to go. You know, I'm, I'm definitely excited. My body feels great. Uh, shoulder feels even better. So, you know, I'm just ready to hit this thing swinging, uh, you know, come Saturday. And then after that, you know, the real the real lights come on. So, Coach, Brooks, Coach Brooks is available at the other presser, just so you know. Yeah, um, yeah Brooks, man. <laughs> Chase? Hey, Brad, uh, now that you've been out there uh, in a game, what, what what types of things do you guys uh, need to clean up, do you think, uh, before the season begins? Uh, biggest thing is spacing, 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 spacing on the offensive end anyway. And then defense is accepting our challenges, man. We got to we gotta be better at guarding our guys, being more in sync and tune, talking more, and just accepting the challenge. I think that's all it is on defense. You know, we got to be able to get into our guys, guard them. You know, granted, we don't. We're not going through with the lengths of our shoot arounds and things like that in personnel, but you know we've played these guys numerous times. We know the first, we know the scouting, uh, we know tendencies. So you know we we got to be a lot better, and hopefully we can do that Saturday. And I'm wondering uh, your thoughts on uh, Killian Hayes. You know he's a top draft pick at the guard position. What were your impressions of him first time playing against him? So we were trying to figure out uh, where he came from last year, a year ago. I think he didn't go to college. If I'm not mistaken, but. He's a, he's, a, he's a really true talent. You know, he's a good kid, good rookie in the league. Uh, great size to him. Has a good feel and understanding of the game. You know, he gets to learn uh, from D. Rose and DeLon Wright over there, too. So, you know, he has good best that he can learn from. Uh, you know, I'm excited to see him grow into the league. You know, but we got to make it a little bit tougher for him on Saturday. He was, uh, he was able to get a little bit uh, manipulative in ways and get to the paint. Uh, created some things for their team, so we got to be better. Brad? Yeah, Brad, I'm, I'm also just wondering what your thoughts on are on uh, Denny's first two games for you guys. Oh, he played magnificent. I would say, 
like I told him in practice the other day, he's going to have good days, he's going to have bad days, he's going to have in-between days, you know, and he has to learn to embrace them all and understand, you know, what you're learning from each of those days and in those moments. You know, he had a great game against Brooklyn. He probably had an okay game today. So, you know, you kind of realize that and look at your film and see where you can get better, where you can, you know, where you can improve. You know, what I love, what I love the most about him is his competitive spirit and his nature that, you know, he doesn't back down from anybody. He continues to go out and compete at the highest level possible. I would like for him to be a little bit more aggressive on offense, looking looking at the basket more and, and uh, serving as a threat. But, you know, that'll come with, 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 with time and maturity and as the game slows down. And and did, did you change your shooting form? Are you, like, keep doing something different with your elbow? Are you keeping it in more? Was that was that the change you made um, last year around the All Star break? I really ever make changes to my shot. Okay. Neil. Hey Brad, you know, no surprise to you. You dealt with it all last year. The doubles and the triple teams that teams would send at you. Do you think teams are still going to be able to do that with you this year when every when you guys are fully loaded? Fully healthy, no. You know, because you have Russ out there, you have Rui, you got DB, you got TB, you got Troy. You know, you got guys who can shoot the ball, who will serve as threats off the dribble, too. You have to respect them and respect what they're able to do. You know, I'm an unselfish player, so whenever I have it, I tell our guys all the time, just give me the ball and I'm going to get off it. You know, I'm going to look for the open guy, I'm trying to hit the guy, hit the big in the middle and let him make the play. You know, whatever the case may be, but, you know, let's get a great shot. You know, I know teams are going to send two, three at me. Let them do it. You know, and I'll get off the ball with ease. And we'll get the best shot possible. Uh, but I don't see it. Honestly, don't see it. You know, teams really slacking up on it. You know, our thing is they're gonna they're gonna force us to, you know, utilize the rest of our team, get the ball out of my hands. So you know, I, I trust my teammates to be able to make the right play. And you know, I think we have enough depth at each position that you know they have to respect other players. Right. And last question to Chase Hughes. Brad, um, how did Coach Brooks react to the game tonight? I know it's just a preseason game, but he, it was he took a long time to address the media. I was wondering if you guys saw what you like to call his dark side. In a way, yeah. I mean, he's – this preseason, yes, but there's still a lot that we did wrong that we can be better at, things that, you know, just common sense mistakes, myself included. So – you know, we just gotta we gotta be a lot better. You know, coach holds us all to a high standard, and you know, with a huge amount of accountability. You know, so I carry myself that way. The team does too. So it's a it's a big accountability factor for everybody. So you know, coach definitely laid it on us. With uh, you know, this isn't the first time. Uh, so you know, we just have to listen to him and understand what he wants. You know, because. He's trying to find answers. You know, that's what he keeps preaching. He's trying to find guys that he wants to put out on the floor. So, you know, he's only gonna he's only gonna put guys out there that he trusts and that he knows can get the job done. So I think he, he definitely got his message across and you know it's up to us to continue to fight for our position and fight for playing time and, and, and get results. Hey coach, we, we just talked to Brad and he said, you know, you weren't um, overly pleased with the team tonight and you kinda lit into the team and said you guys would correct some stuff. Can you just kind of walk us through what you didn't like um, in that game? Well, I, I thought we needed to come out with more urgency in that first quarter. Um, we, let the, we let the offense um, to, to dictate how we pl played uh, with the proper mindset. I don't think we, we, we did that. I thought we, after that, it settled down. I thought we competed much better. Um, we're thinking, I mean, we're, we're thinking a lot, a lot of things and we're not like playing with that type of um, force that we need to play. I thought our guys uh, did that uh, probably like the last two and a half quarters. Um, we can play better. I know we still have some guys out and this important pieces are out, but it's still, like, we have to have that, that sense of urgency, I thought. You know that first quarter, uh, we were just playing minutes and not really uh, very uh, forceful minutes. Fred, Scott, what's what's urgency look like to you in this scenario? If they're showing urgency, what are you seeing? Um, I think I think the game the game 
it's pretty simple. And really breaking it down, if your man doesn't feel you, uh, you don't have the urgency. And there's many ways that your opponent, uh, there's so many games within a game. And the little game that you play against your opponent in front of you, he has to kill you. Uh, and you, you do that by outrunning them. You do that by touching them up. You do that, that by blocking them out. You do that on the both ends of the floor. And I don't think we, we, we did that enough in that first uh, 16 minutes or so. And it wasn't that um, they weren't they weren't playing with that type of um, we've been playing with uh, that toughness. And, but it's all learning experience for some of our guys. I just basically said there's there's minutes to be had, and, and you got to like let's go, let's go, let's let's see are you willing to fight for these minutes? Because it's going to be hard once comes the season comes around, and I'm going to be nine guys, maybe ten. Chase. With Thomas Bryant and the emotion he plays with, uh, was tonight an example of kind of the double-edged sword there where, you know, maybe sometimes it can get the best of him? Yeah, I mean, we have to, Thomas and our our group, we have to be able to play with that, uh, channel that in the, in, the, in the right direction. Uh, he's an emotional player, uh, but you don't, you know, you got to really control that and, and and use it to your advantage and our advantage. Uh, but he's like he's 23 years old. Sometimes it sometimes it gets away from him. But you know, it, his one thing about TB is heart. His heart is always in the right place. Uh, I think it's gotten better with that in that regards uh, the, the the emotion. But um, tonight. I don't think it was one of his um, better first half, but I thought he came back much better in that second half. Ava? Um, Scott, we uh, talked to Denny in the other room. He was a little bit disappointed, discouraged. What did you see from him coming off the bench tonight? Uh, I, I like his I like his uh, skill set and his toughness, and his uh, he, he plays his minutes hard. That's all you can ask for. You know, he's a, he's a young player in the second game, uh, but he plays his minutes hard. You you can work with that. And he's, it, it's impressive. I mean, for a 19-year-old kid that, that, that's not from this country to come over here and and to play the way he has played the last, you know, almost tomorrow will be two weeks. Uh, it's really, it's great to see. It, it, it's um, it's going to be fun to coach because I know, you can work with guys that play with that type of force and determination and that never give up spirit. And, you know, don't put your head down when things don't go your way. Just keep attacking, keep fighting, keep playing as hard as you can. And then did you get pretty much what you wanted out of Brad's almost 16 minutes I think he played? Yeah, probably. I mean, give or take, I played I'm one minute too much, but that's going into it. I only want to keep him under 15. But, he actually wanted to play in the second half. I said, no, we got we got a plan and we got to stick with it. And trust me, I would love to have him play more. Um, but yeah, we we you know, maybe maybe he plays a little more next game. I don't I don't know at, at the moment, but yeah, he thought his minutes were good. Thought his um, his um, little offensive rhythm was uh, he had some good shots and some of the shots would you know, he would normally make. Uh, Thought he was getting bumped a little bit. You know, unfortunately, he didn't get to the free fall enough. Daryl. Coach, has Denny showed you enough in these last couple of games to be the leader in the clubhouse for that starting three spot? Um, I mean, it's still open. We still have we still have a, a one more game, one more shoot around, three more practices. And a, and a day off in between that first game. Um, so we'll, we'll see. I mean, he's, he's fighting for it. I'll give him that. I'll give him, and he, you can tell that he's hungry and he's, he would love to have it. Um, but it's still, it's still minutes are, are important in the next couple of practices after tomorrow, um, uh, Saturday game. Fred, Jeff, one more. Yeah, I got one more. Okay, we'll uh, wrap up after this one. Scott, what do you what do you consider Bonga's strengths specifically as a defender? 
what do you think makes him good there? Um, he cares. He tries. And I think he's uh, he has he's getting stronger. You know, that's that guy. Sometimes I mean, he looks like I've been with him for him going on whatever two years now. He just looks like he's been around for a while. He's just turned twenty one, uh, but he's getting stronger. He's still he's not where he needs to be. Where he's going to be. He works at it. It's uh, day by day. Uh, that maturation process, but he has the length. I still think he lacks some of the strength that he gets knocked off in the spot, but he makes it up because he, he, he tries, he cares, and you know, he definitely makes it up. But I, I thought, I thought we, we played much better. Not, not, I thought he, he sparked us, hit a couple of two or threes. Um, we didn't make any shots and it kind of affected us, but yeah. But also, I just want to let you know, you know, the reason why I was late today, I was, we released uh, a couple of our, or three of our exhibit guys, uh, uh, Marlon and Pioli and Khalif, so that's why I was a little late. It's not, always, it's not easy to do that. It's always tough, but I thought the guys gave us great effort and I wish them, wish them well. Hopefully we'll see them soon.